Hey everybody, thanks for joining us here on 90s Watch for a detailed look at your Colorado weather forecast, which today is going to be just exceptionally warm. And also, we're going to answer a climate-related question for you as well. So all that coming on up here. Let's start things out with a look at Denver. And you might notice those clouds that have been overhead. These are these pesky mountain wave clouds that kind of that the same setup led to a lot of those very gusty conditions for us in around the front range of Boulder gusted to 81 miles an hour last night. Uh, they had to shut down Red Rocks for about an hour or so last night as well due to a power outage that was caused by some of those gusty winds. Fortunately, those winds have really backed on off today, but we still have some of those mountain wave clouds that are overhead on this Monday. The story though for your day today, it is going to be the heat temperatures. Mid 70s for us. Our average high for today is 53 degrees. So we're talking about a high of 75. We are right near record levels. Our record back in 1942, 78 degrees. Um, if we do manage to break through some of those mountain wave clouds today, we'll probably actually get pretty close to that. But I do think we'll keep just enough mountain wave cloud action in place that we will probably stay south of that record. So Maybe not quite record heat for your day today, but we will certainly be on the close side. So it's certainly not exactly feeling like November, but still dealing with some blustery conditions. And in fact, do have a red flag warning in Southern Colorado that I'll show you in just a second. Big changes come up for your day tomorrow and tomorrow night and then to Wednesday morning. And that could lead to a spot rain or snow shower, though. Not overly optimistic about that, though we certainly do need the moisture in around the front range in particular. Fire weather watch uh, in place. In fact, that has now just been upgraded to red flag warning for southern Colorado. That includes Alamosa, the San Luis Valley on east through the wet mountains, Colorado Springs, Pueblo, Walsenburg, as well as on up through Salida, all included within that red flag warning. Now, the winds... That is going to continue to be a bit of an issue for our friends in the kind of east-facing foothills. So we're talking eight, 9,000 feet or above. Loveland Pass, Berthoud Pass, uh, Dakota Hills, Red Feather Lakes. Again, some of those typical spots that tend to be a bit windier along the east-facing front range. We will still be looking at some of those winds in the 30 to maybe 50 mile an hour range for your day today, but it will not be nearly as windy as last night when, again, Boulder, we had wind gusts that in some parts of town exceeded 80 miles an hour last night. Um, some parts of, say, Arvada, as well as Golden, getting those wind gusts regularly into the 60 mile an hour range. So it was very, very windy last night. Eastern Plains also a bit on the blustery side for us here in Ray and Holyoke, but not, again, nearly as windy as what we've been dealing with for the last 24 to 48 hours. Wind gust forecast. Now, one thing you might notice here is it looks generally calm around the state. Would notice there's that little red sliver just to the west and north of Denver. That is some of those uh, kind of gustier winds that are still hanging around the front range. So, again, most of us, 90% of the state, should be um, pretty tame in terms of those winds for your day today and through tonight. But the front range foothills will continue to stay a bit on the gusty side. Those winds will hang around overnight tonight and into tomorrow as well. So, again, those same typical spots, uh, maybe even Boulder getting in on the action later on tonight and early tomorrow, but um, the winds will still be on the gusty side for some of those foothills. Otherwise, we will be looking at fairly calm wind for most of the state. Though Southern Colorado, notice those gusts for us in Pueblo and Trinidad, 25, 30 miles an hour. That's where you do have that red flag warning that is in place, and that's where we could be on the gusty side. Denver already up to 72 degrees for us. Again, your average high for your day today is 53. So we're talking about 72 degrees. I mean, we're going to be warmer than uh, a pretty good chunk of Florida for your day today. And th I'm not kidding about that. We're going to be warmer than Florida here in Denver for your day today. Uh, Pueblo near 80 degrees. What are we doing? It is November the 15th. Still hasn't snowed yet in Denver. <laughs> we're enjoying these 72 degree temperatures. I'm just saying, I I'm just putting this out there. I have a feeling we're going to pay for this at some point because this has been an ominously beautiful fall, I suppose, the best way to... Uh, Describe it. Meantime, downtown 71, 69 Centennial, 65 Greeley, 70 Longmont, 66 Boulder, 47 Blackhawk. Those forecast highs for your day today. Uh, a lot of mid 70s for us here and around the metro area. So most of us, again, running on the warm side, but we will be noticing maybe a little bit of cooler conditions for us in those areas west of Denver. And that's going to be because, well, A, elevation more than anything, but B, slightly different air mass that's over the mountains right now. So that's why um, we are going to be looking at much cooler conditions. You get it up by, say, Georgetown, Hot Sulphur Springs, Grand Lake. Those areas will be more into the low to maybe mid-50s for your day today as opposed to the mid to maybe even upper 70s for us along the front range. Now, as we get later on through today, maybe a few clouds. Those are mountain wave clouds over the front range and 
eastern Colorado, but generally speaking, we continue to stay on the comfortable side for us in and around the state of Colorado and lots of sunny skies. And I'll continue to your day tomorrow, but we'll notice some increasing clouds that we get later on through the day. That is out ahead of our next storm system. And this is not much of a storm system here, folks. I know this map might make it seem a little bit uh, dramatic. I'm just telling you here, folks, there is very little moisture to work with with this next system, and we need the rain badly here in Denver. I mean, we just have been so bone dry since the start of June, but we do have at least a little bit of maybe light snow, maybe some light rain for us in central and eastern Colorado as we get into late tomorrow night and early Wednesday morning. I'll give you a little bit of a qualifier here as well. What you're looking at is the European forecast model, which is a lot more bullish than a lot of the other forecast models. So again, this looks probably a little more, little more ominous than it'll probably end up being, but we could see some flakes, maybe some raindrops, maybe some wet snowflakes late tomorrow night and probably more into your early Wednesday morning time frame. That all gets on out of here very, very quickly through your day on Wednesday. By the time you wake up Wednesday morning, most of us will have that rain and snow long gone. So again, a little band of snow, maybe some rain mixed in there as well for us along the front range. I don't think, I don't think we'll snap our snowless skid here into Denver, but we just might do as we get later on through tomorrow. Eastern Plains, a lot of 50s and 60s for us again as we get into your day tomorrow. Look at these high temperatures we get into your uh, day tomorrow. 71 Denver, 70 Aurora, 68 Parker, 66 Castle Rock, 68 Arvada, 68 Broomfield, 49 Netherland, and 54 for friends in Idaho Springs. So once again, another well above average uh, temperature day as we get into your day tomorrow. And a quick look here at that hyper-local forecast we get into your day tomorrow. We do see some of that rain and snow moving its way on in from the north late tomorrow night, but it'll probably be more into Wednesday morning when we see that possibility for some light rain. And if we do see snow, it would be very light, It'd be under an inch uh, for basically everyone. And again, it just might get us off that snowless skid here into Denver. I'm just going to say probably not. And there's just very little moisture with the system to work with. So Denver's average first measurable snowfall date is October the 18th. That's been, we're almost a month past that at this point, and it has still not snowed yet in Denver. And our latest first measurable snowfall date is November the 21st. And for those of you who keep track at home, that is this upcoming Sunday. November 21st would be this upcoming Sunday. And if we don't get snow from the system tomorrow night or Wednesday morning, we are almost for sure here, folks. We're almost for sure going to break the record. So we're getting very, very close to record territory, and we're just about to... Um, break that. Again, if we don't get snow tomorrow night, Wednesday morning, I would say our odds are 80% plus that we will break that latest first measurable snowfall record here into the Denver area. Now, this is a map that matters more. I've been kind of emphasizing this a little bit as well. The two numbers you should really pay attention to here in Colorado are two things. One, um, yes, it hasn't snowed yet into Denver, but the bigger deal to me, at least for the Denver area, is the fact that our precipitation or rain and snowfall gap is very, very dramatic. We've only seen about two inches of rain since the start of June. That is bone, bone dry. Um, we normally average about eight and a half inches of rain at that point. That's more important. And then this is the other map that matters, the snowpack levels, because that's here into Denver um, throughout Frankly, the entire western United States depends on Colorado for its drinking water for uh, to avoid wildfires, right? The, the water in the mountains, and that comes from snowfall usually. Um, the sno if the mountains aren't getting the snow, that's a much bigger problem than if Denver's not getting its snow. Denver getting snow is a bit more of a novelty. The mountains getting their snow, that's a big deal. And the fact that the mountains, at least at this point, are generally speaking running at, if not maybe slightly above average in terms of their snowpack, that continues to be at least an overall good sign. Now back to Denver for your day tomorrow. Again, highs around 70 degrees. We'll probably see clouds increasing as we head through the day. And that seven-day forecast, well, we got a big change into your Wednesday. Behind that system, we do get much colder temperatures for your Wednesday. Thursday, Friday, we warm back up. And then we'll be right around seasonable levels for this time of year. Our average high this time of year is in the low 50s. So we're going to be maybe a couple degrees above that as we get through the upcoming weekend and to the early part of next week. So Hopefully that gives you a bit of an overall picture for you. Now, one thing we're doing here at 11 a.m. as well is we're taking your climate-related questions. And today's question uh, comes in here about whether this week's warm weather is a cause of climate change or not. Um, and this has been a kind of a running theme. If you've been watching this segment here for the last two weeks or so, you know that I've been kind of emphasizing that climate is very different from weather. So, um, for example, on Wednesday, you, maybe somebody who um, uh, somebody who might not believe, for example, in climate change might write into me. I get these comments on quite, on social media all the time. Is well, it's cold today. It's snowing today. So, 
um, glo uh, climate change must not be happening, right? Climate, remember, is the long-term average of weather in a given place. So the example I use all the time is, for example, today in Denver, it might rain. It's not going to, but um, play with me for the example here. In Denver, it might rain today, but Denver is a dry climate. On average, Denver is a dry place. We see rain in Denver, rain or snow, maybe 50 days out of the 365 days or so of the year here into the Denver, into the Denver area. So it's a, again, we're in a dry place, but it might rain today. So weather is just a very short-term snapshot. Climate is the far bigger, bigger picture. So a thousand word puzzle, weather is one puzzle piece of that. Today's weather, for example, is one puzzle piece of that. So hopefully that explains that for you. So when we're talking about warmer temperatures this week, the best way to kind of put it is here into the Denver area, um, our average temperature over the last 100 years has warmed by about two degrees Fahrenheit, maybe closer to about two and a half degrees Fahrenheit. So maybe what was before a 72 or 73 degree day might be a 75 degree day. That's the best way to think about it. Now, that's a fairly subtle um, influence and uh, today or tomorrow would still be warm even if we didn't have global warming. There's no doubt about that. If we didn't have climate change, it would still be a warm day. So again, I want to reemphasize the fact that yes, today is going to be on the warm side. That is not because necessarily of climate change. Now, the impact and the influence would be that maybe we're a degree or two or three degrees warmer than we would have been if not for a warming climate. Now, that has much bigger impacts. There's all sorts of domino effects. And uh, uh, again, there's again those domino effects, those snowball effects that come from um, a warmer climate overall. But again, there's little doubt that today, tomorrow would still be warm if not for a warming climate. It's just how big of an impact it is. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, it is not exclusively warm today because of a warming climate, but it's probably a bit warmer than it would have been a hundred years ago. So again, hopefully that answers your question. I'm going to go back over to that seven day forecast. You can take a one more look at that. And in typical Denver style, we'll go from 71 degrees on your Tuesday down to 39 on your Wednesday. Thanks for joining us here on 90s Watch for a detailed look at your Colorado weather forecast. I'm meteorologist Chris Bianchi and have a great rest of your day.